Infinity's television spot for its Q60 Coupe features Kit Harrington, who plays Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, speeding through cliched car commercial corners as he recites William Blake with well-practiced intensity. It is an outstanding piece of highbrow marketing, clever and literate where so much car advertising is neither. It doesn't hurt that its star matches Infinity's target demographic, minus a few years and grey hairs, such that those prospective owners might see the image of their best selves in the swarthy bread. Yet, like many great ads, this one is a stretch. We have driven plenty of cars over the years that are exciting enough to make us wax poetic. This is not one of them. It's drugs, not infinitus, that make you start spouting Blake. But before we call Jon Snow no nothing, it's worth considering that this class of luxury sports coupes is currently without a true king. This is an arena that has changed since Infinity last launched a new combat, the 2008 G37. At that time, BMW had a lock on the segment, but its current 4 Series has proved a disappointing successor, softer and less sporting than the 3 Series coupe it replaced. The Cadillac ATS Coupe and the Lexus RC have since emerged as a pair of upstart insurgents. Mercedes-Benz's new C-Class Coupe hosts perhaps the strongest challenge, at least until Audi's new A5 and S5 arrive next year. Seeing Red This gives Infiniti an opportunity with its replacement for the old G-Series. The Q60 comes in four trim levels, starting with the base car, $39,855, powered by a 208-horsepower 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder. The next step up is the 300-horsepower 3.0-liter twin-turbo V6, which starts at $45,205. At the top of the heap sits the Red Sport 400, the model we drove here, a car named quite literally for the color of the S badge on its trunk hood and the power output of its upgraded twin turbo V6. The rear drive the version of the Red Sport 400 starts at $51,300, with all wheel drive available for an additional $2,000. On a dollar per horsepower basis, that gives it an edge, one that's worn out in practice. The V6 revs quickly with minimal turbo lag, and it makes the Red Sport 400 speedy. It also makes a lot of high-pitched intake sounds without much exhaust noise. The Q60 sedan counterpart, the Q50 Red Sport 400, clocked 4.5 seconds for the 0 to 60 mile per hour sprint in our tests, and Infinity says the nearly 3,900 pound coupe weighs just 9 pounds more than the sedan. They share the same 7-speed automatic and gearing, so we expect equivalent straight-line performance. That said, the Q60's greatest weapon might just be its suspension. Dubbed Dynamic Digital Suspension, the adaptive system uses an unequal length control arm fronter and multi-link rear setup with computer-controlled dampers to deliver a compliant ride that stands out in this class for putting luxury before sport. The Q60 has stiffer springs than the sedan, giving the coupe a button-down feeling even in the tightest curves on our drive. We went out of our way looking for some imperfect pavement but instead found a rut of dirt lane that meted out plenty of abuse. The Q60 refused to bottom out and emerged back onto the smooth tarmac impressively unscathed. Getting personal. The suspension has two settings, which can be toggled by selecting one of six drive modes. Snow, Echo, Standard, Sport, Sport Plus, or Personal. The first five of these settings gives you a pre-selected and self-explanatory combination of tuning parameters for the throttle and transmission, as well as the steering and a few other features. And then there is the rabbit hole of personal mode, in which the granularity of choice gets crazy, especially if you've opted for the steer-by-wire direct adaptive steering, or DAS, $1,000. With three settings to vary the ratio spread of the steering system, two of which have three subsettings that control the off-center responsiveness, the AS itself has seven different modes. Combine this with the rest of the choices a driver can make in personal mode, and the combinations run into the hundreds. In fact, Infinity proudly proclaims that there are 336 distinct possibilities for the tuning of your Q60, and that, to any normal person, is a problem. 
Even in more than 200 miles of driving, we were hardly able to suss out combinations of settings that seemed to work better than others. After a few minutes of toggling a single variable, attempting to reach a definitive explanation for what it did, we more often than not gave up and went back to plain old sport mode. At dinner, the engineer responsible for vehicle dynamics said he mostly preferred sport mode, too. But he also indicated a preference for the DAS system, which is now in its second generation on the Q50 and Q60. The engineers love this steer-by-wire system for what it can do, it allows them to tune greater variety into the steering field to please a wider array of customers, but we find that it still can't mimic a really good hydraulically or electrically assisted steering system when it comes to feedback. After we briefly drove the car with the standard rack-mounted electrically assisted power steering EPS, we certainly can't recommend DAS. Compared with the Q60 with standard EPS, the DAS equipped car has a quirky feeling just as the wheel moves off-center. Tiny steering inputs on center that might be lost in a standard system due to tuning and the necessity to overcome friction generate real motion of the wheels with DAS, which can make the steering seem nervous. And the standard EPS feels better anyway, and more consistent, even if it is a bit overboosted. Late Arrival Driving dynamics are not the Achilles heel of the Q60 Red Sport 400 anyway, regardless of which steering system is fitted. Despite its new arrival on the market and a lack of sameness in its shapely exterior detailing, the Q60 seems dated. That's a byproduct of its shared lineage with the Q50, which made its debut in 2013. Inside, the materials and design don't compare with the class-living Mercedes-Benz as much as they resemble the layers of mediocrity in the Cadillac. Many of the buttons and switches are cheap plastic Nissan items, and the analog gauge cluster looks as if it could have come from a Sentra. The cockpit is cramped for this class, and Infinity's dual-screen navigation and infotainment system is illogical and difficult to use. It's unfortunate, really, that a luxury sports coupe that delivers such a complete mechanical package, with plenty of luxury and just enough sport, should be undermined in this way. But to sit on the throne, greatness is not required. Merely besting your rivals will suffice, and Infinity again has a credible challenger. Did we mention that the Q60 has extremely comfortable seats, both seats, 